Jackie Asimwe Mwesige, a lawyer, human rights activist and mother of two, is a proud feminist. She talks to us about why she considers herself a feminist and her general perception of feminism. I am deeply passionate about women, about their well-being. There's a time that I, I don't remember what I was doing at the Faculty of Law in Makere, and I saw a bumper sticker on um, Joe Oloka and Sylvia Tamale's pickup. And I think it, it summarized for me what, when I say I'm a feminist, what I mean. It said, feminism is the radical idea that women are human. I radically believe that we are created the same, that we aspire to the same things, we should have the same opportunities. For many feminists, their journey will be catapulted by an experience or a series of incidents that will stir up a passion to champion the cause of equal opportunities and fair treatment for women. Jackie's experience started at home while growing up. The first, if I can call it, feminist fight that I had or my, my coming into, no, this is not fair. We are three girls and two boys in our family. I'm the firstborn. A lot of the housework fell on me and as my sisters grew, they, you know, the, the housework load was shared. As my brothers grew, you know, we noticed they were doing things like leaving their dirty plates on the table, not cleaning the house, you know, things like that. And we grew up without house help. That was my, my parents' policy. So one day, my sisters and I said, you know, we can't have this. So we called um, the first gender conference in our house. And we sat down our brothers and said, look, you have two hands like we have. You eat food like we eat. You make clothes dirty like we make our clothes dirty. You make the house dirty like we make the house dirty. We are not doing this alone. As far as the general perception goes, Jackie agrees that feminism has been misunderstood and misrepresented as well. She believes it should be an ongoing conversation. She recognizes that there is an anger that drives the work that feminists do. Yes, I know that there is an anger and, and I think you cannot fight for something if you don't have that inherent, I'll call it holy anger. There has to be something that you're not happy about um, in the status quo. Um, I don't know how you can smile about women being beaten. I don't know how you can smile about, um, yesterday we were hearing a statistic of every year 1.2 million girl children in Uganda drop out of school because of sexual violence, either they are impregnated or they are defiled or they don't have pads, you know, so they drop out of school. You cannot be happy about women dying while giving birth. You cannot be smiling about, you know, so the things that, that you cannot be happy about, the fact that women have to struggle to just be at the table, at the decision-making table, you cannot be happy that. So there are many things that, for which anger is a good thing and therefore drives the passion to see change. Well, that was Jackie Simwe sharing with us uh, her, her thoughts on feminism and how her journey started. So before we begin our conversation, I'd like to know what you each identify as. So maybe we, we know as we're go, going along with the conversation who is sharing with us and talking to us. Regina, what do you identify as? I'm a human rights activist and feminist recently. How recently? How recently? 2007. 2007? Yeah. Wow, that's recent. <laughs> Ten years. Yes, yes. Belinda, what do you identify as? You're a feminist. You don't have another story, I mean an addition to this story? Well, if, if you look at feminism in its entirety and what it aims to achieve, I think all of us are feminists. Okay. Or have been or will be in the future. So, I'm a feminist. Okay. Benjamin? Um, I am a man on my journey of feminism. What does that mean? Um, it, it means that I, I understand where I need to, to where, where I need to be to finally identify as a feminist. Uh, but I also understand the role of men in, in this conversation. Mm. And I need to first overcome that. Mm for me to arrive at the point where I can ably say I am a feminist. Okay. Yeah. That's very political, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Godiva, what do you identify as? 
Me yeah, identify as a feminist. Um, a lot of people have referred to me as radical, and I, I, I don't reject the label radical because I think, like Alice Walker said, radical means to grasp things at the root. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that at the root of feminism is this idea that women are human beings, mm -hmm. and in asserting that women are human beings, I think that it's important to be radical because we are speaking about human beings. So that's how I identify. How do we define yeah. feminism? Anybody, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, feminism is about uh, empowering women, liberating them, so that they are able to enjoy all opportunities that the men and the boys enjoy. But it's also about protection and promotion of their rights as human beings. Okay, Belinda? Well, I think um, <coughs> in a perfect world, um, feminism would be a way of life, meaning that um, women have the right to achieve their potential. Okay. When we discuss feminism, it's not just about the right. What does the right help you to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in a perfect world, it would be a way of life. Fathers would support their daughters to go to school. Women would have uh, positions, positions in parliament. Um, they would engage in economic activity. They would be allowed to soar, okay? But that's not the reality, and that's why we have a feminist movement, okay? So the way I would identify, I mean, I would describe feminism is anybody who believes that there is inequality, that there is some brokenness in society that marginalizes women and goes ahead to support women to change um, the conversation mm. or to do something. That includes fathers who pay school fees for their kids, um, employers who think maternity leave is very important for women, our president who has you know, encouraged women to engage in politics, anybody who does anything to support women. Our president is, is I think he is. You think he is? I think he is. I would, I, oh, oh. I would disagree in I certain would, ways. I would. Yeah. I think, like, <laughs> I <would>. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to disagree? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not disagreeing as to whether he's a feminist or not. But in terms of, if we're talking about feminism as practice, yeah, because for me, I think that the reason why women are marginalized in society is because of sexism. Yes, yeah? yes. And so feminism is a movement to mm -hmm. end sexism and sexist oppression. Mm -hmm. It's not so. so but what, you know what happens, and where I'm going to cut you short, is mm -hmm. if you define feminism That's by bringing another word, no, no, that I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. Then the conversation is going to take another turn, and mm -hmm. then you'll have a. No, let me explain it. Yes, explain eh? it. Yeah, yeah let me explain what. Because when we say things like girls are not going to school, why aren't girls going to school? Mm -hmm. Because of sexism. Because sexism is this idea that says that there are certain specific things that each gender, each sex should do, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, men are there to look after the family. So you should send your son to school because he will come back and build your house. And yet we know it's mostly daughters who build their parents' houses in this country anyway. And then this idea <laughs> that, <laughs> and then this idea that women, a woman's place is in the, in kitchen, the kitchen, yeah? Yes. So women must cook. Men are not encouraged to learn how to cook. Yet as an adult human being who should be able to feed yourself, you should know how to cook. So that's the sexist idea, yeah? Sexism is what places each of us in a box because of this sex that we were assigned when we were born. And yet, you know, it's, it's not that when it's you're born as a woman, your ears come with a special <laughs> ability <laughs> to hear when food is burning. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I think that at the end of the day, for me, Feminism is not just about a person standing up and saying that they support women. Because a lot of men stand up and publicly say that they support women while they're beating their wives at home. Mm -hmm. That idea, We've that sexist that. notion yeah. that mm -hmm. tells you that you have so much power over your wife mm -hmm. that you can beat her. Mm -hmm. that is what, that's what we want to dismantle. Mm -hmm. We don't want to just tell you, stop beating your wife. We want to tell you, this is why you're beating your wife, and this is why it's wrong, and this is why you should stop. Okay, so for me, that's what... Be before, before you go on, and I know mm. you have a way about you when it mm. comes to this particular conversation, mm. I'd just like to know from our audience, because I feel like you carried all your friends with you, because there's so much applause Did from I? this. <laughs> 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 I'd like to know how many feminists, if you by show of hands, how many feminists do we have in the audience? Only oh, on, <laughs> only the... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And, and some men. Oh, oh, and, and how many, what did you define it as? Allies. No, I, I was going to say, and that's where the danger is. Okay, I, mm. want, I wanted to know the men who are in support of feminism. Do we have any? 
Oh, okay, so they're Libro, about yes. Libro, it's called Libro Feminism? Libro. It does Libro. Yeah. Okay, so Benjamin, on your way to, on this journey of feminism, <laughs> you're saying you're on, on the journey, what have you found out that it is about? So I know from my life that um, I have access to things um, and, to, and opportunity by m merely by the virtue of being a man, yeah? Um, and I can get away with a lot of things. People, there are things that people can't say to me because I'm a man. I dress the way. I don't think twice about how I dress because no one will, because that, that doesn't even come up, yeah? No one comments about, you know, my, my legs or, you Because know. you're not wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. but I, I, I think, so for the question really usually comes with how we condition girls to behave a certain way because men yeah have defined how girls should should be, should should behave yeah so girls have to think twice about what they wear because they are scared that a random man who should have no claim on them is, or, or even if they had a claim on them, is going to tell them, you can't dress up like this, you can't um, talk to me like this. Yeah. Oh, is, it, is it only <laughs> men that have defined <laughs> how a woman should carry herself? No, I mean, even Absolutely. women, because I think, I don't think that um, by, just by, I don't think we should assume that women, yeah, by just being a woman, then you are feminist, yeah? Because I think, mm. and that's mm. why I was saying that mm. that's where the yeah. problem mm. is when, when you asked and someone in the, in the say audience only, said only, only women, only, only yes. women mm. yeah? Mm. Because as long as men still consider themselves to be um, superior in, in some way, mm. yeah? Um, then, then we still have problems with, with with because because this is about equal opportunity yeah? yes. it's about you being able if if someone is in the audience yeah and they still think that th they'll still be the same ones that will have to make that decision whether to send a girl to school or not yeah they will clearly not yeah uh, and they will not yeah is, is there a personal experience that drew any of you to the beliefs that you have today I think that my experience is very similar to what Jackie described, yeah, because I grew up in a very large family, but I had, I have about six, seven sisters mm -hmm. and two brothers, yeah, which means that at home we had this, basically, it's really the status quo in most homes, that the girls do the dishes, do the cooking, do the washing, and all these things, and then the boys really usually just sit back and do nothing. And I remember when I was in, I think it was primary three, being moved from the school that I was in to the school that my young brother was in because, you know, he needed me to take care of him or something like that. And then, of course, getting older and coming into contact with the work of other feminists really brought me to feminism. But I don't think that there's any woman who lives in the world as a woman, yeah, who can claim that they have not experienced oppression. The mm. things that Benjamin is describing when he says men have the right to comment on women's clothes and whatever, that's the society we've created. So as a feminist, I like to walk around and tell women, do what you want, wear whatever you want. But at the end of the day, it's also about safety, mm. yeah? yeah? Because women have to think very carefully about their safety mm. before you go on the street. It doesn't matter that there's this feminist telling you to do what you want. <laughs> there's still going to be the man who is going to grab you. So women are constantly having to navigate our lives as a safety concern, mm. yeah? Mm. Not necessarily as, do I want to go to work? Do I want to go and have fun with friends? It's constantly, will I be safe when I do it? Mm. Because of the sexist society in which we live, where women are basically supposed to exist for the pleasure of men. Yeah. And then men claim that power. And it's usually claimed in very violent ways. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I understand what you say when you say, oh, not, j not all women are feminists, yeah? But sometimes when women express certain opinions, especially about other women's dressing, I think that for many women, because I've had a lot of older women, older feminists even, yeah, who have questioned me, they're like, okay, so you're talking about this agency and control of bodies and whatever, but what about safety? Yes, yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regina, you, you wanted to share your personal experience that brought you to this 2007. My personal experience is um, quite funny. I was in a, a leadership training, and I, this was, I think, was my first time to interact 
with self-claimed feminists. And I think what really happened was that whoever wa had organized that leadership training did not give us opportunity, we the new entrants, first of all, to internalize what it is that they were bringing to us. And I was a bit annoyed. I even had to pack my bags, leave the workshop. This was a week's training. What happened? Uh, what happened was that they were telling us things that I'm not going to talk about now, but which I feel were very, very important to me as a woman and as girls as they grow up. So I packed my bags, drove, went back, came back to Kampara. But at night, I again reflected, and I was like, haven't I missed? Am I not missing? And of course, the people I was with at home were wondering why I had, first of all, bid them farewell and be away for a week. And here I am. So the following morning, I packed my bags again. And you went back? I went back. <laughs> what, what, was your, what was your thinking before these self you self claim What was your thinking before they spoke? These are spoiled women. Mm. They want to spoil me. Mm. Here I am. I've been working. I had been working for a women's organization. I was promoting women's rights. But here I was being challenged to actually consider certain things that sometimes we don't even talk about. For example? Mm. In the open. For example? And... <laughs> <laughs> I want that example. What, what, and, what and, I and, 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 Josephine, <laughs> I was like, no, I can't, I can't be challenged like this. Me? No, I drove left. But the following morning, by then no one knew I had left. Mm. I just came sat. But rumor had gone around that had actually escaped. So the organizers called me and I was actually scolded for having left. And I asked them, I will not mention her name here, mm. but I asked her, what was your reaction when you first got into contact with this information? Mm. And as Godiva says, these were and still are radical feminists. And when you ask about the definition of feminism, I'll tell you, very many people define it differently because of the context and because of their experiences. And personally, I consider myself a liberal feminist. Okay, so I'm going to ask you what a liberal feminist is. And of course, I want to find out what it is that you found out from these feminists. I'm not letting that go. Hey, I will tell you. I will tell you. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room. And tonight, we are talking feminism. Uh, Benjamin, is there a place for men on this table of feminism? And I'm not saying this is a table. I'm just saying on the table. Yes, um, there definitely is a place for men uh, on the table because men are the problem. Um, feminism exists because of patriarchy, yeah? And men... Um, is that what? Okay. Yes, I'm going, to define what, I'm going to, to define what it is. And men benefit from... So all the things that we've been, we were talking about in the first, uh, in the first segment where women... Uh, where these, these gender roles yeah, mm. that, that are assigned to women because they are women or girls because they are girls and, and, and where the ones that males get away with. Yeah? Be because of that balance of imbalance of, 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 of gender roles yeah, is why feminists exist. And because me men are the ones that benefit from, from, from this inequality that, that of, of sexes, yeah, is exactly why it's incumbent on us to, to dismantle that, that, to dismantle patriarchy. patriarchy. Mm. Although I know that it's, it's, it's very hard, and uh, there are days when I don't, because I know that it's, it's, it's nearly impossible for you to dismantle something from which you're benefiting, yeah? Well, Belinda is shaking her head. 
And Belinda, before you, you say what you want to say while you're shaking your head, um, there is this thought out there that feminists are looking for a world without men. That what, that's what it seems like to many people. So that's why we have hashtags like kill all men, men are trash. And then we have people thinking that modern Western feminism has become a divisive and sometimes a hateful force. Mm. Belinda, I saw you shaking your head. Yes. What were you thinking? Well, I'm, I'm shaking my head because um, when Benjamin say that, says that men are the problem, I get a bit uncomfortable because, and I'm a feminist, because the objective of, of, of feminism is to create some kind of harmony, okay? Whatever I should call it, equality, equity, it is some kind of harmony in the way we relate in society, okay? Now, when you single out the men and say that they are the problem, you are putting them on the firing squad to be shot. This is what I think about patriarchy. The men are not to blame uh, for being the way they are. I mean, look at our cultural conditioning, look at our colonial legacy. They are not to blame. And you'll also agree with me that patriarchy is really a thing of power. Anybody in a position of power will most probably act the way, mm -hmm. the way they do, okay? I mean, what are things that make us uncomfortable? Um, relations in the home, for example. Mm -hmm. um, when the men think that all the work should be done by the ladies, mm -hmm. or when we get back to the office and they're recruiting women and, and um, the men are given more... Uh, are paid more? Paid, paid more than, than, than the men. I mean, what examples of patriarchy can we give? Let's look at this thing like critically. Mm. It's a power thing. And anyone can have power. Mm. A and woman can have power and a man can have power. So let me ask, if it was the women, if mm. the, 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 the tables were to turn, mm. and it was us who are in the place of the men, wouldn't mm. we do the same thing? Except can I out? just come in for a second? Yeah. <laughs> One, I think that, Belinda, you're engaging in very kumbaya I don't know, like, <laughs> analysis of the world. Because mm -hmm. first of all, the essence of a patriarchal society, which Uganda is, is that Someone the society, that's what I'm trying to do, okay. is that in a patriarchal society, the society is organized, yeah, in order to serve the collective interests of men, which is why men have people feeding them. Men have people cleaning for them. Men are paid more than women. Mm -hmm. Men hold all the power in the family. Mm -hmm. So in a patriarchal society, the power all lies in the hands of men. So when Benjamin says that men are the problem, I do not think that he's putting anybody on the firing squad. What Benjamin is demanding for is accountability because men overwhelmingly benefit from the patriarchy, which is why a lot of them are so invested in upholding it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now, if we're talking about a situation in which power, the power structures in a patriarchal society are collectively organized basically to support the power of men. And those are the situations you're describing, yeah? Mm -hmm. When men being paid more than women. Mm -hmm. Can we, in a system like that, mm -hmm. honestly change anything if we don't hold individual men accountable? Because when you're speaking against um, a family that is discriminating against its daughters, mm -hmm. who do you go to? You go to the father. Mm -hmm. Because that's the person who's deciding who goes to school. Mm -hmm. So if you come to the father, is that putting him on a firing squad? Benjamin, I don't know. Benjamin, I, what were you demanding for? What were you saying? You know what? I, because I, I, I just like to add, yeah, that you to, who? To, to what Godiva is saying, yeah, that you see, for you to arrive, for a man to arrive at a point where they are comfortable with uh, their, their self, the intellectual self awareness, yeah, that is required, yeah for a man to be comfortable with not being threatened by, 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 this, by the balance, yeah, um, is, is, why, is, is, is why now we have this problem. Because I think a lot of men who have designed the system, because, because this system that, 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 that exists now, yeah, um, is designed by the same people that are supposed to dismantle it, yeah? And what we need is for, for we need them on the table. Yes, that's mm -hmm. why we need them on the table for them to be, be if, if you're responsible for creating the problem, you're responsible for solving it. But so we need you on the table as allies. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 They created the problem. That's what you're saying. Men created the problem. It benefits them. It benefits. Who created the problem? And then I will ask you who has nursed it for generations? Men and women. Women, it's most especially. No, because here's the thing about living women. in a patriarchal it's society, women. also, yeah. another thing is that oh. we are told that these sexist conditions that have been imposed on us are inherent. They are inborn, you know? You as a woman, you're born to want to get married. You're born to want children. How many people do you know whom you can confront with something that they have been told since 
the day that they were born and then expect them to just change overnight like this. It doesn't happen. So fine, both women and men uphold the patriarchy in many different ways. So but at the end of the day, the primary like responsibility. I would like to say that, of course, patriarchy is about power, as you are saying. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy is about oppression. Mm -hmm. It's about discrimination. Mm -hmm. But both men and women play a role mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of socialization, because of our cultures. Mm -hmm. You find that actually you may even find a woman who is, who is more discriminative, mm -hmm. who is yeah, more just. oppressive mm -hmm. than a man. Would you blame her? It's because of the way she has been nurtured, mm -hmm. the way she has been socialized. But I think what is also important now is that for both, the men and women mm -hmm. need to interrogate the issue of power mm -hmm. so that we are able to not dismantle, but share it. Yeah. Share it. Distribute it. Yeah, distribute it so that yeah. we are able to all get yeah. the opportunities we are talking about. Yeah. Mm. So I, I have yeah. another question now that you talk about opportunities, um, and I'm going to look at that side. <laughs> when we are talking about feminism, what is the difference between feminism, a feminist, for example, mm. and a Women's, women's rights, rights activist. A women, a women's rights activist is a feminist. Mm. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. This is my understanding. Mm. My understanding of feminism is women's rights. And what are those rights supposed to do for them? To help them achieve their potential. Where that is falling, um, our friends, the Godivas, all come up together. They, they legislate laws. They, they advocate. The word is advocacy. We're looking at our friends, Godivas, talking about the lawyers. The feminist lawyers. Okay. Because, I mean, they are lawyers. They advocate to make the, thing, the, the, the situation better, to balance, to harmonize society. So anybody who is a woman's, women's rights activist is part of this wave of feminism. That's mm. what I understand. <laughs> First of all, I think that th those, those two statements alone just mean different things yeah. because a yes, feminist, really. like we said, is mm. a person who is participating in this movement towards dismantling patriarchy, ending sexism and sexist oppression. I think women's rights activists, for the most part, are women who are employed in spaces such as NGOs or corporations that are advocating for the rights of women. Because mm. feminism is a very political term. That's mm. the thing. So for the most part, you have to claim the identity as a feminist. And feminism is not just about the saying of things. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. For example, I lecture at a university um, at the Faculty of Law. And as a teacher yeah, who is teaching both women and men, I always have to be conscious because research has been done worldwide that shows that we are more likely to ignore women when they speak or try to get our attention than men. So I'm always very conscious when I'm in a classroom that okay, now I've picked two men, let me at least pick two women. It's not just the saying that you believe, it's mm. also you have to very deliberately act in a manner mm. that not only changes those sexist ideas that you have, mm. but also that confronts the sexist ideas that other people have. So for example, it's useless for me to tell somebody, stop commenting on women's bodies, when also me, I'm walking around and I meet a woman, I'm like, hey, but you've gone fat. Why is that skirt short? You understand? Mm. So before you even start removing the log from somebody else's eye, where is the, <laughs> you know, what's the happening in your fast. own eye? Mm. So, yeah. You look like you've looked at me like you wanted to say something. No, I'm, I'm, I'm now trying, I want to ask Godiva if then uh, feminism is just about patriarchy, breaking, dismantling. Is that what it's all it about? It's actually a, a question mm. about is feminism about looking for special opportunities for women, or is it about hmm. looking for equal opportunities? But now, Josephine, that sounds That's like people who say... say now Josephine, because mm. it's not me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> now whoever Josephine yeah. is representing. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like people who say that, let's say, for example, when people are advocating for LGBT rights, that they are advocating for special rights. There's no such thing as a special right. Yes, no, that's, I'm, now, I'm now drawing an analogy, yeah? When a human being stands up and says that I declare that I am a human being, yeah? I demand the same rights that you have. Is it a special right, for example, for you to send your daughter to school as you're sending your son? Is it a special right for you as a man to step into the house and carry and your baby carry because baby. they are crying? Is that a special right for a woman? You understand? I think that that's a very 
intellectually lazy and dishonest argument that people make that women are demanding for special rights. What is a special right? You know? I, okay. So, um, Regina, I'd like you to, because you are a woman, you are a woman rights, rights activist. I so wanted what is the difference for you? The difference is that the women rights activists, are, they are selective. Mm. They are selective. selective. They choose rights to promote. Majority of them are actually belonging to NGOs, while a feminist is broad based. Okay. Is broad based. And therefore, and again, for you to claim that you are a feminist, there won't be room for if, what okay. if? You're all in. But people, what will people say? No, you are in need and support all rights, irrespective of what they are. Okay. Belinda, yeah. very quickly. Yeah, so I, I, I really want to circle it in my head mm -hmm. that the women's, women's rights activists fall under this big umbrella of, the of feminist. feminists who are tackling quite a number of rights. They handle specific rights, but then the whole feminist movement brings this whole cause of women um, rights under one umbrella. And the women's rights is not just about patriarchy. There are so no, it's not many a other small things. I just get disturbed sometimes when we just focus on one and forget the others, and yet they matter. Patriarchy could be something that is common uh, here in, in the urban areas, but what about the women in the villages? Mm. It's not but common. patriarchy it's not, is... I'm just asking a question. It could mm. be one of the things that is common here that we can give like live examples. Like an example. But what about the women in the villages? What are the challenges they are facing? So my, my question, mm. Belinda, is, is patriarchy doesn't exist in the, in the rural areas? It does. It does. I'm trying to say that it's not just patriarchy that is really making us uncomfortable. There are other yep, issues. Other issues. Mm. And I would like us to collectively address, address each one of them, not just deal with one. Mm. Because I'm, I've never faced uh, like a seriously patriarchal situation in my life. But then as a businesswoman, I face other challenges. Belinda? Yes. Um, um, Belinda. Belinda is taken back. <laughs> she, she's... You've never? You've never? How? So, oh, there is no, I'm totally shocked. Mm -hmm. no, this woman drives a car in Kampala. No, I'll tell you what. The reason why I say that is because at a certain point in my life, I realize I will, I will ignore it. So I don't... So you face I'm, it. I'm you just, just ignore it. it. Yes, so mm. I will not sit down and say, oh, this is a big problem. Because I know it comes with the territory of me coming out of my traditional role as a woman to mm. come into the workplace, to drive on the streets, to do business. I will face those things, okay? So I will not sit down and see it as a big problem. But then mm. there are other issues apart from, you know, mm. patriarchy. All right. Well, let's take another short break, and this conversation continues immediately after. Mm. Mm. Welcome back. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room. Well, this is the last bit of our conversation. So I, I, I don't want us to end this without looking at the support and the criticism that there is for feminists. So something I found online that just about sums up some of the thoughts of those who are against feminists mm -hmm. and it says I don't need feminism because only the weak minded buy into cults and because blaming men for your own insecurities and mistakes is wrong and absurd. Mm. So I think depending on whether that comment came from, from a man or a woman, I'm going to respond to it like it came from a woman because of the use of the word weak minded. Okay. I think that Nobody wants to accept that they are oppressed. Mm -hmm. You understand? Every, we all want to assume that we are living in this world as human beings, recognized, celebrated. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, it's very jarring, mm -hmm. right, to discover that these things that you thought were your role are actually you being oppressed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women, and a lot of women are very anti-feminist. I don't like to call women anti-feminist, oh. but a lot of women are anti-feminist mm -hmm. because of their own insecurities. Now when you recognize that you are a human being, what do you do with that knowledge? Yeah? And, um, and also, if we see the way that people interact with feminists in this country and in any society. In 2003 in this country, Sylvia Tamale was voted as the most hated woman, worst woman in Uganda. Guess who the worst man was? Joseph Kony who killed <laughs> people. You understand, this man killed people, cut off their limbs and 
the equivalent of that in a woman was Sylvia Tamale, who at the time was the dean of the first female dean of the law school at Mackay University. At the time was advocating for sexual harassment policies to be introduced at Mackay University, right? So first of all, we have to look at the expectations. For a man to be considered bad, he literally has to kill people. For a woman to be considered bad, all she has to do is stand up and speak up for herself. Okay. Well, so Bolingo, you said something um, earlier, if I remember correctly. You said, op you talked about oppression, mm. and you said about the roles that women play. And I've seen this on the timeline, often mm. enough on social media. Mm. Uh, women saying, what if me, I'm comfortable kneeling, and you're telling me not to kneel? What if me, I'm comfortable in the kitchen, mm. and these feminists are telling me to get out of the kitchen? Why are they telling us what to be? Now that's where the question I think of critical thinking and also just informed choice comes in, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to a doctor, you're supposed to give informed consent to every, I don't know, medical procedure that they perform on you. And I think that that's the same thing that feminists are demanding for, for women. If you want to be the kind of woman who cooks, do you understand that that is not your role? Because a lot of women in this country think that it is their role that they were born with to cook, yeah? I like to cook. I cook for myself. Does that mean that I want to cook for in-laws and relatives and friends every time they <laughs> show up? You understand? That's not the thing. And the same thing with kneeling. Because the kneeling conversation happens a lot, especially on the internet, because Winnie Bianima likes to bring it up. Yeah? Fine. If we are saying that kneeling is this amazing culture which all of us are trying to uphold, then let those who want to do it, do it. And those who don't want not do it. But the problem is, for women who refuse to participate in those things, then you're called a bad woman, you're told you're disrespectful, you're killing African culture. You understand? So there's a very deliberate effort to force women to participate in these things, which people are saying they are so great, which we are choosing to do. When a, woman, when a man doesn't cook, nobody walks around calling him a useless man. But you be a woman and you tell people, I don't know how to do anything except boiling water and hear the things that they tell you. You understand? <laughs> so our society is deliberately enforcing these things while trying to make women feel crazy, you know, by telling us that you're imagining this oppression in your head. No, we're not imagining this. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Well, Belinda, you want to respond mm. to that? Yeah, I, I want to say that um, when we get feedback like that, I'm a communications person, when you get feedback like that, it is feedback like how you went and bought a product and it did not work. So if feminism was a product on the shelf, people are looking at this product and they're trying to analyze it. How does it fit into their lives? When they give feedback like that, it's not that they are throwing the baby out with the bathwater. They are trying to understand it. They could be having uh, conflicting messages that are coming to them. And I think we need to be a little bit gracious because some people are conditioned culturally and they are struggling. I don't have a problem kneeling any day on Kampala Road, in Parliament, in State House, at White House. I will kneel. So I do not, I'm not comfortable with someone telling me that is a wrong thing because that is who I am and I am comfortable. It doesn't make me less of a woman. I would also want to say that sometimes um, we run a risk of creating messages that will make people start questioning themselves and saying, if I don't do these things, does it mean I'm less of a woman? We need to be careful. Because um, all of us are here to achieve our potential. Okay? Let us not take these things that society is throwing at us to measure how much we can, we can achieve in life. You know, if you have a dream, go ahead and achieve it. If, this, if there is something that um, is blocking your way, um, Maybe if it is a, like the issue of patriarchy, okay? <coughs> if it is growing economically, if it is remuneration at your place of work, let it not be the thing that stops you from achieving your dream. Eventually, these things will be dealt with. Our feminists, I'm sure they are working very hard. They will deal with these things, but go over the noise okay. and go ahead and achieve your um, dream. All right. Benjamin, I want you to very quickly say what you want to say because I would like us to wrap up. So, yeah, so I just wanted to say that there's, there, there's also that you, the, usually you have a problem with what people think feminism is and what feminism actually is. So I think some, some of the criticism um, comes from that gap, the inability to define or, and, and the comfort in, 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 in your assumptions. Yeah? So you'd rather not know, not find out, and uh, and 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 use use those assumptions and other um, 
the, the prejudice that you have, yeah? As opposed to just finding out what, what's this feminism thing about. So instead, um, you, 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 you'll actually find that you are engaged in, in, in acts of feminism without even thinking without about it. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have about three minutes to go, and I'd like each of us to leave us with something to think about while mm -hmm. we close. I'm going to start with you, Regina. Um, I think feminism is about packaging and uh, messaging and then deliverance. Because if somebody is supposed to be interesting you into the movement, does not package, does not reach out to you, obviously we are bound to get those biases and misconceptions. Uh, and therefore, I'm glad we have young people here. Information is power. Go, read, come and approach us and actually challenge us who are in the movement. You'll be able to find that it is amazing to become a feminist because it's about promoting women's rights. It's about ensuring that we all enjoy equal opportunities. Okay. So, Belinda, your closing remarks? Yeah, well, uh, my final uh, remarks would be that there is a place for femininity in every society. And there is a contribution the that every woman brings to in the workplace, in the home. I mean, the warmth, the apathy, all those things are very important. Okay. So do not be pushed to think that you have to be a man. Be a better woman. Be a better woman. Somebody said thank you like that's what has been in the conversation here. Okay, yeah. like, carry yeah. on. So just strive to be a better woman. When you're a better woman, you will do business better. You will mm. relate better. Mm. You will advocate better. You will be a better citizen. So don't work hard to be a man. Work mm. hard to be a better woman. Mm. Because women have... <laughs> right. Benjamin? Um, I'm, I'm going to speak to the men. <laughs> so sad. Okay, very quickly, Benjamin. Time is fast, Ben. Yeah, um, I think for me, as a man, I, I'd like to live in a world where um, I'm playing in the same team, yeah, with, with equals, yeah? And that's why, for me, I'm on this feminist journey. Because I know if, 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 if this life were a game, I'd not want to be on a team where half the members of the team are not uh, are not at the same level as I am. So my, my You'd be cheating. Yes. Mm. No, I wouldn't be cheating. I I'd be losing. You lose if half your team is not at the same quality mm -hmm. as as the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. That's why we should really be interested because just imagine where we are, yeah, and imagine where we would be if we were if if women were given equal opportunity and access to um, you know, the amenities that men can access. Just imagine where we'd be. Mm. Okay. Godiva? I think that Belinda has made the point about a patriarchal society perfectly by saying that women should not work to be men. Because the default human being in our society is a man. So the moment anyone steps up to say, I'm also a human being, yeah, you're told you're trying to be a man. Mm -hmm. Nobody is trying to be a man. Feminists are not trying to be men, yeah. Feminists are trying to live in a society in which women have access to the same opportunities that men have, in which women are treated in the same good way that men are, yeah? in which women have a right to stand up and speak for themselves the same way that men do. The fact that men think that the ownership of a personality and individuality and humanity is exclusive to them because we saw them all clapping in this room, right, is the problem, <laughs> is the issue that feminists are trying to dismantle. That thing in your head that tells you that you are inherently better than a woman, yeah, that because you have a deep voice and you don't... All right, good river. <laughs> uh, that's the thing that we are working to end. So the men in this room and the men who are watching, Reconsider when you say I am a man, think about the traits that make you a man and consider mm. if those same traits apply to women yeah. Yeah. and then you can start your feminist yeah. journey. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, all of you, for sharing your thoughts and taking the time to uh, sit here this Sunday evening. Well, that was our show this evening. You can catch it on uh, NTV's YouTube uh, channel. And also the hashtag is PWJCO on Twitter. Join the conversation. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition. Keep it NTV.